Hi guys, how you doing? Um, you know, I wasn't planning to do this, but I think it's the best way for me to articulate how I'm feeling right now. Uh, the best way for you guys to feel what I'm feeling, to tell the story that I've been dying to tell since I started this work with uh, CTD development systems. Uh, development, <laughs> uh, development Services Incorporated, my nonprofit, my 501c3. Uh, I've been working on this I've been working on this campaign, this public relations campaign with, with my clients, my friends, my team, uh, to get the word out about the work that we're doing, to tell the story that I'm about to tell, that we're about to tell over the next few months, I think, because um, it's an important story. It, it's, it's, it's an American story, right? It's an American story about failure, tragedy, success, triumph overcoming adversity and i was going to start it with a, a letter that i was going to write to you all to all my friends in support uh, of these people these, these friends of mine that you know i complain about how i grew up and some of the barriers and challenges that i overcame and it did nothing nothing absolutely nothing in comparison to what some of these stories you're, you're going to hear and learn about are and, and so I'm just going to read what I started writing for you guys and uh, hope you know that uh, you get on board that you support uh, what we're trying to do and so it starts with dear friends a couple of months back I announced my return to Facebook indicating that I did so with a purpose this is the purpose The purpose was to tell you a story both of both triumph and tragedy. This is a story about my clients, the people I am presently serving through my nonprofit, CTD Development Services, Inc. The story is a story of triumph because every person whose story I am telling is a resilient survivor of the challenges most Americans face today, trying to live the American dream. In some cases, the goal for them hasn't even been trying to live the American dream. The goal has been to simply be able to live in peace, peace within themselves, free of the personal tragedies that keep one from even being able to think about the American dream. Uh, tears roll down my eyes as I write this letter to you, just thinking about some of the very difficult barriers to even wanting to live in some cases, for some of my clients, my dear friends, barriers that they've had to overcome. And so why is this a story about triumphs? It's a story about triumphs because they're still alive. They're still fighting to keep their families together. They're fighting to take care of themselves and their families and to provide their families with a better quality of life than they've experienced themselves. Most of all, this is a story about triumphs because you're still doing the right thing despite all the, the temptations and the challenges and the setbacks and the letdowns. They don't complain. They don't ask for a handout. They were embarrassed to even ask for help. They work freaking hard every single day of their lives. And while they're doing all this hard work and they're still overcoming, they're trying to help others. They're, they're trying to make a living helping others. Like, damn, what great people, what an amazing group of people these are. And yeah, you know, the political pundits are going to tell you that more people are employed now than ever in the history of our country. But all you need to do is look right under the surface of that message to see that Employment doesn't equate to living with financial security. And we all know that that's the first non-negotiable requirement of living the American dream. And you know, why is this the story about tragedy? I call it the great American tragedy. I call it the great American tragedy because 
even while they're all doing the right thing. No crimes, no complaints, no injuries to others. Uh, showing up to work every day, on time, ready to work, ready to help, wanting to be of assistance, not asking to be rich. Some of them might not make it. Their families might not make it. They might need to move into back in home with their parents. And if that's if their parents can afford it. They have the room, you know, having to ask for handouts, having to ask for help. Fuck, we don't know. Some of them might end up being homeless. And like I said, these are the people that do the right thing every day, that show up to work every day, that work. Listen to me, they work. They work hard. And there's so many stories like this out there right now. I mean, there's more of that than there are like these tragic stories of people just being dirt broke and dirt poor, you know, and that's who we like look at, you know, that's who we feel sorry for. That's who we like give to. It's like we're, we're faced, we're looking in the wrong direction. These are the folks, this is like the shrinking middle class that we always talk about. You know, that God damn, they work hard. Some of them went to college for crying out loud. And all they want to do is just take care of their families. And they're so silent. Nobody knows about it. If you looked at them on the surface, you'd think strong, young, educated. But damn, you know, some people face some such hard tragedies throughout their life that all you're seeing is a shell. All you're seeing is a mask covering some real hurt, some real pain, some real barriers to just, I mean, they're just this close. This close <laughs> to being able to just to make it, you know, and, and we don't pay attention to them. We're either taking care of ourselves, trying to survive ourselves, or, you know, we're looking at those who are just so down now. It's like, come on. You know, think about like this growing homeless population in Los Angeles. A lot of those people are the people that I'm trying to help, you know, were the people that I'm trying to help right now. You know, they're just this close to just being secure, being more capable than anybody else to help others, or they're that close to just losing it all, not having a place to stay in this place with overpriced rents and mortgages. <laughs> and I'm talking to you today to get on board with helping them, getting bored with helping me help them. I lived a blessed life. You know, I came from the hood, but God, I, you know, thank God for my parents. They really protected me, they sheltered me, surrounded me with people who wouldn't let me fall off the beaten path, who wouldn't let me accept failure, who wouldn't uh, allow me to experience failure alone. Even though a lot of times I push people away to leave me alone. But some of these guys, you know, some of these guys, they, their, their parents left them at the worst of times. Or they got screwed over. You know, over and over again because of their innocence, because of their goodwill, because of their trust in people. And man, I don't know how they make it, you know, but they're tough, they're fucking strong. They carry, they, you know, not my older age, they, they've carried me through some tough times. And I want to help them. I want to give back by giving to them. But not just, you know, to help them, because these are the guys who are touching hundreds of lives, thousands of lives, and the lives they touch will touch thousands of other lives. And before you know it, the world's a better fucking place. You'll see the memos, you'll see the emails, you'll see the messages. You'll watch this video, you'll watch their videos. <laughs> you'll watch them tell their stories with a lot more composure than I'm telling mine right now, but I want you guys to feel this. I want you guys to feel them. And this was the best way I could do it. 
So I hope uh, take heed to what I'm saying because this, what I'm offering to you right now to help them is the way that we're going to make the world a better place. I know this. I feel it in my heart. And you can make a difference by just getting to know us. Forget about me, you know. Just get to know me long enough to know their story and then help them. I can take care of myself and my family, you know. I threw into myself over and over again. But I want you to help them because they're the ones, they're the day-to-day -day heroes that make a difference in so many other lives. And wait till you get to read about or learn about guys like Beto who like, his wife can't work because she has to go pick up the soccer players that he trains, you know? It's like, Jesus Christ, what commitment to like helping these kids become men, become soldiers through soccer? So clean, healthy, you know? And that's just one story. That's just, he's my, 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 they're all heroes to me, but he's my number one hero. So I give him a shout out right now, but uh, they're all great. I haven't even begun you know, tell them half of the story, but you can see them on my, on my website, on my YouTube page. Um, excuse me. <laughs> uh, just stay tuned. I look forward to your participation, your involvement, and I, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.